Hello YouTube, Coach Lee here, and today we're going to talk about a event we just went to, came back from in Hong Kong, the Ein Harriar Cup. The Ein Harriar Cup is held by the local group Ein Harriar. Go figure. That's their cup, their group. And it's based in Hong Kong, and it was a pretty good event actually. This is a young team um, head, headed by a group of passionate coaches. You've probably seen guys like MJ out in the world. He just came back from Ontario. You got Mizzou. You got Eric. And you got Conrad, the main guys I spoke with there. And probably in a few other coaches as well that I met. Sorry, guys. I don't remember everybody's name, but those are the names to stand out. I'll do my best for next time. But super good group. Super good guys. And lots of positive news about the tournament. So let's get into it. So... I was scheduled to fight in both the Sabre, which is my what was considered my Rust Breaker tournament. It's been five years. And then later on, Rapier and Dagger, which is what I've been really preparing for lately. So if you don't see me video of me fighting certain things, I'm probably preparing for it. Go figure. I don't publish a lot of video of myself fighting, just my students. Because I hate looking at my own fighting. True story. So the Sabre was my Rust Breaker tournament. It was intended to kind of break all that ring rust I have. I may have been retired for five years, and now I'm just kind of really fighting tournaments for fun. Don't worry, people. I've done a longsword. I have no interest in fighting that and for a while. I'm not even sparring it here, mostly because I find it pretty boring. Ooh, well, he fights longsword boring. I'm sure that'll create stir. So the Sabre tournament was by Rust Breaker, and I fought a total of five matches, but I got injured pretty badly in the first match. A lot of reasons for that. Major one, stepping on a BB and slipping, but because it was held in an airsoft field. First match, absolutely terrible. Worst match of my career. The next four matches, though, were definitely noteworthy and worth talking about. Uh, my favorite match of the day came from a guy from Lionheart named Ha Wong. Super nice guy. Huge guy. Brings his mom to the tournament. Like, what a sweetheart of a guy. Fought awesome. Came up to me. He's like, hey, man, let's make this super clean. That's the kind of fight I'm looking for, especially now that I'm largely retired. And it was awesome. The guy, the guy was good. Like, I mean, we had, we had a good set of exchanges, gave him a big hug afterwards. Just a warm, friendly guy. Super nice, the whole event. It's a pleasure hanging out with you. I hope to see you in another event. And maybe fight a different weapon set next time. Um, the other four, three guys I fought all were from I'm Here Jar. And they were all good. I was actually quite surprised. Which is good because from a young group, they're producing very skilled fighters at a rapid rate and i was quite impressed the three guys i fought were were excellent and ryan my student who was there as well but he also retorted that all the guys he fought from same club were also just as good and he enjoyed fighting he had enjoyable fights with them as well win or lose so that was also really positive we'll go into the saber tournament i fight four fights and one leg finally i get to my last match i was thinking about pulling out of the aliens i actually don't think i should have ended the aliens personally but that's just me but the guy I was talking to, Steve Toe, who I fought fought in that first round of the Limps, was such a nice guy. He was looking forward to fighting me, he said. So I, I was like, all right, man, uh, I'll fight. I have, I'm down to one leg. I'm trying to conceal this injury. And Nicole comes up to me and says, how bad is it? And I'm like, hey, it's not good. I have to push myself to win. And it's a very close match. I push a little too hard. Hamstring tears. Fortunately, it's a minor tear. I stopped. I was smart this time. I actually stopped when my coach told me to stop. A little bit of personal growth. Pretty happy to report that. I get it. I come out of the ring. I'm limping. Nicole's like, how bad? Uh, uh, how bad is the pain or how bad is the injury? She's like, both. Eh, eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. You're done. All right, coach. So that was the end of my Hong Kong return fight, unfortunately. A little, uh. Make top four, first turn back. And, you know, it's nice to see a guy who was in our online program for a short period, Thomas Gergley, there. It was really cool to see him take third. And the guy I was scheduled to fight for the semis, Ingbo, he won really good. So happy for him. I was very happy for him. With that said, the Sabre, we do the, the, we'll get into why the Sabre finals was probably the most unwatchable tournament that I've ever seen. But we'll get into that, the rules section of this video later on. But more importantly, just like in the Rapier tournament, we got to tag in. We got to sub in with Nicole, and she'll get into that next. And subbing in for Lee again, Nicole Smith. First up, I'd like to have a little chat about the city itself. 
Now, one of the benefits of HEMA travel is you get to go to a lot of really cool places. And if you've never been to Hong Kong, it should definitely be on your bucket list. The city is beautiful for the tiny little bit that we got to see. Everything from our trip up to the peak, the views from up there, the slow ferry ride around Kowloon Bay, and just the city lights at night. It was absolutely spectacular. So one thing to note about the peak, there is a beautiful tram ride that takes you up to the top. Once you get there, with the taxi ride down, don't go on a public holiday. Let's just say that. Don't go on a public holiday like we did. The cab ride down from the mountain or the three hour wait for the tram ride down. That part wasn't fun. Now, one thing we really did enjoy though was the food. Lee and I are from Vancouver and there was a lot of really good Cantonese cuisine, but nothing we've ever had in Vancouver compares to the meals we've had in Hong Kong. Everything, the roasted meats, the fish dishes, we didn't have a bad meal the entire time we were there. So if you're into food tourism, another reason not to miss Hong Kong. Let's have a talk about the event venue. They chose to hold it at an airsoft studio. Now, this is interesting because there was actual airsoft games going on in the background. <laughs> okay. In addition to all the, you know, noise and chaos of our ordinary event, we had gunfire and babies floating around, you know, just behind the wall. Actually, it was um, a time where a couple of them escaped. And if you're up on the balcony, I actually got pegged with one, but that's another story. So I'm, I'm not sure if that would be a choice for next year, but I mean, overall, the space was okay. It was big. There was enough room for everything going on. Um, there was a little bit of a slip hazard. Now, that, that is something to consider for a venue for next year. As, as much as they tried to keep the babies clear of where we were fencing, there were a few escapees. And uh, I know for one that was how Lee, one of his injuries was, you know, slipping on one. So yeah, perhaps maybe next year we'll try something else. So let's talk about rules. Let's talk about the tournament's ring size and things I liked and the things I didn't like. And start with the things I didn't like. So the bad of this is the A, the ring size. The ring size was a little too small for what we were doing. And it seemed a little bigger than it was, but the problem was not so much the engagement. The problem was the defense of the afterblow and the ability to, and the ability to ring out very easily. So because we were in a six meter ring and any contact with your foot to the, um, to the boundary was an immediate ring out and due to those rules that if you hit a guy and then escape, you lose, if you ring out, you immediately have zero points. I was very enforced very strictly. This was a problem in terms of dealing with an afterblow, especially considering that this afterblow took a full second, meaning the person could throw one or even two attacks if they were fast, right? So you're often defending two afterblows and without the ability to zug out accurately, right? And you're like, what's it? zug out? Abzug, blood and enter, zug out. So without the ab ability to withdraw or zug out accurately, you know, it was very difficult for my, for myself and my students to, to accurately defend that because you hit a guy, he's waiting for the afterblow. Maybe he doesn't think he can defend. He's going to try to afterblow you. You know, that's going to be problematic, especially trying to escape. And then you ring out accidentally by any contact. When I say any contact, a, a sliver of that heel touches, boom, ring out. Or if you're trying to move around the guy for a better angle, sometimes you touch the boundary, boom, one point to your opponent. So that was something I didn't like, but I mean. I'm sure they'll do better next year. These guys are real smart. So I have absolute faith in them. Other things I didn't like, the double rules. There's just the double, the double, the rules with doubles simply encourage more doubling, compound that with a very aggressive deductive afterblow. People, uh, people when you were up or were up would just double, would just afterblow you repeatedly to try to make sure you couldn't have score. Or if you were already up, they would just double you, making sure that you couldn't score or in the case of the limbs, where a double would take one off the person in the lead, if you were in the lead with somebody, they would just suicidally double to, to cancel that lead. And we saw that in the Sabre tournament, which made these really long, absurdly long finals and semifinals, but which were just basically double after double. I think my student said there's something like 20 doubles for three clean exchanges. And that's just a fault of the rules. 
some of the his competitors will do whatever they're going to do to win, even if it's the lowest common denominator. That's just human nature. That's how it is. So I didn't like those aspects of the rules. So with that said, what did I like? Hey, YouTube. You like what you see? If you do, come join our free Discord server. You can chat with like-minded sword enthusiasts from around the world. Or perhaps you're interested in our online classes or our in-person classes. If you are, check out the links below. Well, there's actually a lot I can unpack that I like. Number one, as I've mentioned before, I really like the clean fencing of the local guys, the Hong Kong group. Really good. Um, MJ did a good job directing. He, uh, him and Mizzou were quick to call out flats, which I like that as well. They had no flat strike rules, so they were a few flats got through, but I mean, very rare. And you see a lot of, and they see a lot of them calling out bad contacts. In fact, my student Lee Lee Squared, you all know him as Lee Squared, but also as Bang Lee, he fought really well, even with an injury. He came into fighting with an injured wrist, and he made a limb. But the first few fights pretty rough. He was landing a lot of flats, and he looks at me. He's like. Another flat call. I'm like, yeah, we'll try using your edge, buddy. And we laughed, we laughed it off in the corner, right? Because, <laughs> you know, MJ was right. So that was something. So that was really good, too. So MJ did a good job directing. The director's professional, um, and they did their best, especially considering they're you're quite experienced. But by doing their best, I would say that was still better than a lot of the European tournaments I've fenced in. So with all fairness to, to our friends at Hong Kong, they did a pretty good job. Now, the rapier tournament, unfortunately, Lee was not able to continue. Now, this wasn't his decision. This was our decision. Basically, the, the team decided, no, you can barely walk. You're not going to compete in a rapier tournament. So we wake up the next morning and Lee's like, hey, why don't you fight at the rapier tournament? I like, I have no gear. I have nothing. Eh, you could just wear mine. Anybody who's ever tried to fill Lee shears... Trust me, it is not easy. I showed up with a pair of sandals and a pair of heels. So yes, I had to wear the man's shoes, his jacket, his, his mask I had to borrow. His head is way too big for me. But that being said, thankfully, the organizers were really kind and they gracefully allowed me to step into his spot in the tournament. It was kind of funny. All of, all of the signs for the ring, it always came up as Lee Smith. So yeah. I, I was Lee Smith for a day. I'm really hoping that next year when I come back with my kit, you can see a little bit more of what I can actually do. But I did somehow managed to win a technical award. Now, I'm not sure is actually my technical skill or whether they just felt sorry for me. I look so ridiculous. But either way, thank you very much. The fencing in the Rapier tournament, I really enjoyed. It was probably one of the cleanest Rapier matches I have ever experienced. Removing the light cut was probably one of the smartest things they ever did because it really forced a thrust-centric game, which is mostly what rapier is about. Um, I really enjoyed it. I hope they continue it for next year. The rapier tournament was one of the cleaner rapier tournaments I've seen. It wasn't this messy Euro just flailing around. It was clean, crisp, precise. There were fewer doubles, much fewer, any fewer doubles, and a lot more dedicated thrust and covers. And I was quite appreciative to see that. That was a one of the nicer rapier tournaments I've seen, I would actually attribute that the rules where the leg shots were, were taken out. Speaking as the king of rapier leg shots, I'm totally fine with that. I mean, it's a cheap shot, and it's better. And with the rapier, it's honestly better to have just mostly a thrust game. I also like the fact they standardized weapons. Thank you so much, MJ and team. You guys standardized weapons. I appreciate that so much. So you didn't have some crazy guy in there with a 48-inch blade rapier which is absolutely ridiculous but people out there cheater swords because i mean it's easier to have a cheater sword than it is to have a sword that is uh fits requirements so you're not using a sword you're more using the skill <laughs> so thank you very much guys for st the standardization work you put in and you and enforcing that standardization i really i really appreciated that the long sword tournament was meh it really i felt it really suffered from the doubles rules and um yeah, that, I think that was really what caused problems. The deductive after the rule being so aggressive also suffered because a lot of guys would just hit to hit back. And, uh, and pair that with any tip counting, any touch counting, um, at least from the judge's perspective, that might not have been the way it was intended in the rules, but the judges were calling pretty much everything. So, I mean, I'd say the long sword suffered from that. 
It wasn't the worst I've seen. It wasn't the best I've seen. Um, but so I would argue the real star here because of better set of rules was the rapier tournament. And if they could eliminate the bad double, the bad double rules and maybe decrease the after blow contingency by one. Um, so they'd be that one that deducted after blow is minus one. I would argue, and that way covered thrusts are real priority. I would argue that tournament would be a real superstar in the coming years. My overall impression of the event is definitely a two thumbs up. I had an amazing time and I really enjoyed the rapier tournament. I'm super looking forward to coming back next year with my kids <laughs> and showing you all what I can do. The, the Einhardjar guys are fantastic defense. They are honorable. They are conscientious. Um, I can't say enough good things about the fencing in that club. So guys, whatever you're doing, keep on doing it. You're awesome. Overall event, I give it two thumbs up, mostly because I like the passion of the guys running it. They're passionate. They're willing to improve. They're trying new things. I mean, MJ travels all over fighting people. He's a good fencer. His, judge, his judges and directors are all fighters. I mean, this is this is good. I mean, this is this is how things improve. If you're seeing this, guys, it's not a mean criticism. I really think you guys have potential. And I will say this, and the most important part of this event, the food. This was easily the best food at any event I've ever had. Event food is usually hit and miss, but these guys brought in a whole pig and chopped it up. So after the tournaments, Nicole and I ate a bunch of pig and may or may not have drank some beers. And I will tell you, that pig was amazing. From from snout, snout to ribs. Great, like what a great thing to put in the vet. Unfortunately for the guys fighting longsword, it happened during lunch, so no one could really pig out. <laughs> but we did. It was great. Good for us. Hats off to you guys on having the big pig feast. That was great. And I really hope to see you guys next year because clearly you guys are training hard because your fencing was good. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Train hard, fence easy, do the thing. See you later.